Hello, this is Kevin with Earthway Experience. This is an Earthway Experience podcast. Hello, this is Kevin with Earthway Experience. And today I want to talk a little bit about what is permaculture. Over the last several years, I've been traveling around uh, Darlana and over to Yavla and different places here in uh, Sweden, this uh, part of Sweden, and giving some introduction to permaculture uh, lectures. And uh, it's really hard to give just a really quick uh, talk about what is permaculture. An introduction to permaculture course uh, class, I, I should say, uh, would could last a, a whole weekend. And um, the full permaculture design uh, certification course, it's 72 hours. Uh, so when I go in and I give a, a one hour um, talk, what I usually do is I, I show them kind of what I've been doing and I talk a, a little bit about what are some of the ethics and principles and, and things about permaculture. Uh, but today I was listening to Paul Wheaton um, a uh, famous uh, man in permaculture and Jason Hartman um, on a podcast. And uh, I guess they say the, the greatest, f- uh, they say that uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So I really want to thank uh, these two for the um, this podcast because it really made me think. And I sat down and took some notes. And uh, so I want to go over a little bit now on... Uh, Really, what is permaculture? Mm -hmm. So there are many people who have heard of permaculture, and of course there are many, many other people who have not. So the term permaculture, it comes uh, from the early 70s is when the term was coined, and it was coined by Bill Mollison and David Holmgren, and you can say they discovered uh, permaculture. There's many definitions of permaculture, um, but I really like to hear what, what Paul said. Um, he says, I like to say that it's people working with in harmony with nature. So I can go fishing and canoeing and to be lazy. People get uh, into permaculture because they want to grow more food. But permaculture, it's not only about what or how we grow food, but it's about how we build our houses, our buildings, how we consume energy. It's about a a whole bunch more than just growing food. Uh, Community is a great uh, uh, motivating factor for me, and and so the place that I'm building really incorporates uh, these social interactions, community. So once we do get our permaculture system going in our garden, we don't really have to do anything in our garden except for harvesting food. If our system is working correctly, we can grow all the food that we want, all the food that we need, but we don't have to weed our gardens anymore. We don't have to irrigate them. We don't have to fertilize them. We don't have to worry about bugs. All we have to do is go out and harvest food. A good way to really get into permaculture is just to slow down and to think and go out and observe nature. Observe how a forest grows. Observe the area that we want to grow our food in. Maybe we already have a garden area. Maybe we don't have a garden area. But observe the land that we want to start growing our food in. If we look out in nature, out in our forests, our wonderful forests here in Sweden, for example, we see that they don't need fertilizer. Every uh, once in a while, the, the people will go out and thin the trees, harvest what they need. Um, But underneath these trees, we see lingonberry, blueberry, (laughs) cantrell. There's moose, deer, wild uh, boar that live in the forest. And they 
live and and grow and thrive in our forest. So all of the things that we grow in our garden were once wild plants, and they grew without any human interaction, any human care. Then we took these things into our garden, and then over many, 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 many years, millennium, 10,000 years, they say, gardening started. We forgot that these uh, things, they could care for themselves. So when we design our permaculture garden, we should look out to the forest. The forest, the leaves fall, the needles fall, uh, tree branches fall, whole trees fall. And we see that the worms are out there, microorganisms are under that uh, mulch layer. So we look to the forest and we try to imitate the forest in our gardens. So we can take uh, straw and, and different uh, things and we provide a mulch layer. We do some composting and we add this to our soil. And just like the forest, if we have healthy soil, we have all of these microorganisms and all of these worms and things that are in our garden area. Um, these things help us care for the soil. If we have healthy soil, then we're going to have healthy plants. So with this healthy soil that it's mulched, we get healthy plants and we don't need fertilizers, watering, or we don't need to weed our gardens anymore. So all of the things that we use in a normal garden, for instance, a hoe, buckets, and different watering utensils, shovels, all of these things are artificial. And all of these things, nature can do itself. Or do you know what? It really doesn't even need to be done at all. For example, weeding. If we mulch, we don't need to weed. If we plant our garden right, we don't have to worry about insects. Our normal garden, normal agriculture, we use, we use our muscle instead of our minds. Uh, for example, we bring water to the plants. And we have to water and we have to irrigate. But if we look out into the forest, we see, hmm, we should ask ourselves, how did these plants get water without our help? So this is how we get started in permaculture. We should go out and look and get back a little bit to nature again. In permaculture itself, it involves a lot more than just gardening. Um, the word permaculture, it means permanent agriculture. And it also means permanent culture. Permaculture is a collection of ideas on how we move forward in not only a sustainable manner, but in a manner where we can thrive. It provides us safety, it provides our food, it provides shelter, water, and with permaculture we have a predictable food source and we can prepare for whatever might happen around us. Permaculture we can have a safer, more reliable, and a more comfortable future. So there's a lot of steps that we can take to start permaculture so that we can start providing our own sustainable future. And we talked about this a little bit, and it's uh, going out and observing nature and starting to you could say, grow ideas into our minds. Permaculture, it's, a, it's really, it's a different way of thinking. So when you get into it, you know, just kind of take uh, your time looking at these different ideas. Permaculture, it takes ideas and processes and um, it borrows things from, from 100 and more years ago and it also borrows from things that are uh, come from our current times. 
permaculture. It's still growing. It's still adapting. And it's all depends on our own local conditions, which is really cool about it. So permaculture is kind of a that compilit, compilation, uh, that best of music album. It's the best of all of these ideas. So it's um, we should go out and use our, our brains instead of our muscles. We should think and plan for 100 hours and go work for one hour instead of the way it normally is, is the other way around. Plan for one hour and work for hundreds of hours. As I said before, uh, regular garden and agriculture, it's about using our muscles. It's taking things off from our own site. Maybe it's uh, different types of machinery, uh, rototill and um, tractors and things. But permaculture, it's about using knowledge and using nature to make our lives a lot easier and a lot safer. Permaculture, it's a polyculture, lots of things growing in one area. If we think of this as, as more like a symphony, lots of beautiful, wonderful interactions between all of these things. And we can think of uh, our regular agriculture, which is a monoculture. And you can say even organic agriculture is one instrument. It can be beautiful, but when we add all of these things together, when we do all of these things correctly, and we place all of these things in the right place, and we add the right textures to the soil, we get this wonderful, wonderful collection of plants and life that are coming up from the ground that can provide and sustain us and our family and our friends and this is really what permaculture is as we start to get into the lifestyle more uh, many many people in permaculture they find that they want to provide more of the things that they uh, need and that they use around the house and and we want uh, many of us we decide that when we buy things we want we want quality things we want things that are gonna last so there are many people in permaculture start getting into other self-reliant activities brewing our own beer and wine making soap making crafts making clothes we want to learn about different and more healthy ways of preparing our food. Fermentation, for example, which is beer and wine making, but it's also about sauerkraut making and pickles, all those good foods. Many of us, we decide we want good quality things around us. Uh, I like uh, Grand Furch axes, these handmade axes here from Sweden. I can use these my whole lifetime and I will be able to hand them down to my children. Some of the other things I personally like, uh, I've been using cast iron uh, pots and pans for over 30 years now. I have one pan in particular, it was my great grandfather's. And he used this pan to cook his lunch when he was out working on the railroad. So this pan, it's over 80 years old, and uh, I don't see why there's no any reason that, that it shouldn't be used for at least another 80 years. So, I don't know, I don't really like to buy pans or plastic toys for the kids or things that I'm just going to throw away in six months. And some of these plastic toys, you know, they get thrown away in one day. So if you're interested in uh, your family's safety and comfort, uh, I really recommend reading a little bit more, familiarizing yourself with permaculture. There's a lot of good books out there. I'll list some in the show notes. There's uh, introduction courses and there's uh, one-day introduction courses weekend introduction courses, and then if you really start getting into permaculture, there's a, 
72-hour permaculture design uh, certification course. These are available uh, at Earthway Experience, but there are uh, lots of lots of different places that provide these education experiences. So I really want to thank you for listening today, and uh, we hope to have you come and, and watch some of our other videos. I'm just here trying to pass on some of the little bit of knowledge that I have. And uh, I ask you, please uh, go ahead and share what you know about permaculture, what you know about gardening, what you know about reliance, self-reliance, sustainability. You know, I'd really like you guys to share those things with me as well. Thanks for listening. This has been another Earthway Experience podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Please uh, check out our website at www.earthwayexperience.com.